this is Power Sports 420, uh, I'm also known as Motor Rider 42 HC and James Smoot. Um, this is our <clears throat> lifted off-road easy go rock crawling golf cart. Now the first thing I decided to do besides doing a little repair work on the motor is install a radio. Now this seems kind of odd in a golf cart that's going to be beat to hell but you have to have a radio when you're with your friends off-roading it's, it's not even a question of importance. So obviously I installed it before I filmed because filming gets in the way of installing as I learned when we did the last golf cart I had. So it's very simple. You get some kind of head unit. You come back here, you get a wiring harness that's either labeled or has an instruction sheet with the colors. Now, a mistake that I originally made was you need the battery and the accessory wire. Wired, you run it under your dashboard, under the cart. All carts are different, especially the ones that are a little newer. And you come up to your battery, your power, and I know the battery looks really bad, but we don't really have a distribution block. And then you have your ground. Now, I put a switch on mine so it doesn't drain the battery by running the clock. So if I'm going to be gone a day or two, or even up to a week, I should be okay. But any more than that, and it's going to drain that little tractor battery that we got for it, because it's just a cheap battery. Um, and you just run that back up to the head unit. And actually, the our golf cart, uh, EasyGo TXT, already had a hole. We just had to saw it out and Dremel. And I'm still working on how to mount the stereo so it doesn't fall in the hole now that the hole's a little bigger than it should be. Um, then we took the speakers and we mounted them down here so the magnets are resting on something solid. Because when it bounces around, we don't want the speakers just swinging if, if I would have mounted them up top. Now, <clears throat> we basically just wired the front speakers. We don't have rear speakers. We might do that in the future. I bought 50 foot of speaker wire from Walmart, which has everything. Uh, I usually try to go to AutoZone, but in this case, you know, AutoZone charges way too much for wire. So I went to Walmart. Um, and you just wire up left and right. Uh, you might actually have to rewire left and right because it's not always labeled. It's usually just labeled front. And unless you have an actual color-coded diagram, then it's going to be hard to tell between front left and front right. In this case, mine are reversed, but once again, what does it matter? You're not playing video games. You're not listening to surround sound. So so all the wires are in, so we're going to test it. I already got my switch on to keep my settings safe, because that's one bad thing about older head units, like this one, which was salvaged from a 2000 Blazer. Um, if the power goes out, your settings go. All your fades, your balance. And that's one thing I wanted to show you guys is the, the fade settings here on this unit. So let's turn it on. So hopefully YouTube won't mute my sound because they're a bunch of assholes. But basically you go in, you find your equalizer, and you go to, well, you can change your bass and treble depending on your speakers. My speakers are pretty cheap, so I turn the bass all the way up, and I knock the treble down so they won't overdrive. And then the balance you want to keep centered unless one of the speakers happens to be a little more powerful. That's really only for better speakers. And then the fade you want all the way to the front. So you're not sending power to the rear speaker wires which aren't connected and that could be bad for your head unit because I don't think older head units have the ability to distinguish whether you have speakers connected whereas newer ones might be able to shut off those outputs when they're not being used. I'm not too sure so I would say it's better to be safe than to possibly short something out later on while you're off-roading or getting a little water splashed up or whatever. So and then real quick I just want to go over before I go I want to go over some of the other things we're going to do. Down here is the, the drive clutch which is the big fatty one and then the I guess the driven clutch and we're going to put new springs in them um, to make it, how would you say, more torquey, more powerful. And I'm going to show you what the, the belt does now, and then I'll show you what the belt does after we put the springs in. And we'll probably detail the spring install a little more, because from what I've been told, it's, it's supposed to be simple, but sometimes it can get hazardous. So let me show you the uh, clutches real quick. So, as you can see, when the drive clutch engages, or sorry, the drive clutch engages right when we start the motor, and that is, that's terrible. I mean, it's designed to do that for safety purposes, but in this case, we're going to convert the ignition harness so the motor starts and idles, and that way it's constantly powering the generator, the radio, the headlights, which were already installed along with the lift kit, which is why I won't be chronicling or detailing how to do that. Maybe if we get a different golf cart at some point, you know, 10 years down the road when I graduate and everything, but the drive clutch 
is bad right now. It's, it's, it's worthless, basically. So, and then the back clutch, it doesn't open too soon, but it opens too soon for our purposes, for rock crawling, for you, you roll up to the rock, you stop, you survey the area, and then you get on the gas and you crawl up it. And speed kills when you're crawling. So we need to get these torque springs to lower the speed a little. I have the governor tightened down all the way right now. I'm going to back it back off, put the speed back down to about 15, because right now it'll go about 20, and it's kind of scary. Uh, and I'm actually going to get back there and show you how that governor works, because there's so many questions about that online, and all the descriptions online are worthless. They're not worthless. They're just, it's hard to follow with no pictures, no video, no here's how you do it. So let's watch the clutches one more time, and you can see what I mean by instant engagement. <laughs> switch to the governor video if anything that might be popping up on a second video depending on the length or I might put it at the beginning of the video okay so here we got an easy go TXT we're gonna zoom in on the engine compartment it shouldn't be too hard to follow now we're gonna come down here throttle cable right here this is the governor this is the adjusting thing and there's sometimes a lock nut back here sometimes there's a piece of wire or a cover plate get the cover plate off get the piece of wire off adjust this until this spring is tightened to the point where when you're on level ground, you just hear the rev limiter start to ping. Then you come back, you unscrew it just a little bit so the rev limiter doesn't ping because you do not want to ping your rev limiter. That is very bad. This isn't a race car. So then you're going to get to the max speed with the motor you have. And the only way to get more speed is either speed gears from the internet or a different clutch or a new motor, uh, whatever. Um, now for rock crawling, I'm going to adjust this back out a little bit because right now when I go downhill, it pings the rev limiter, but not on level ground because it doesn't have enough torque to get to the speed on level ground because it's lifted. So I'm going to adjust it back out so when it's going downhill, it can't ping the rev limiter. And that way, it'll also help us slow down while we're rock crawling, uh, especially if we want to go slow down the hill because we're crawling down the hill instead of just turning around and going back down real quick. Because it depends on how difficult of a hill we're going to find out at uh, St. Joe State Park in uh, Farmington um, whenever we get a break in the weather. I also might throw in some uh, 180 videos me sliding around on the ice on our driveway from an ice storm. Uh, so I, uh, I'm going to mount this camera over here to this mount, kind of facing backwards like this maybe, and I'm going to go drive it around a little bit once I finish mounting this radio. Actually, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I got this sleeve that is, it goes on like this, and I have to cut a little slit in it so I can put the wires through, or I guess I can just plug them in through it. And then I got to trim it 